You've probably heard that artificial sweeteners, even though they don't contain any sugar, could trick your body into secreting insulin due to their sweet taste. Now, if that were true, it could mean serious ramifications with using artificial sweeteners. But is it though? Let's find out. Now, a very quick rundown of artificial sweeteners. Artificial sweeteners or sugar substitutes are synthetic compounds that are used to add sweetness to a food in lieu of adding sugar. And there are tons and tons of artificial sweeteners, but some popular ones include aspartame, saccharin, sucralose, and neotain, amongst many others. And there are also natural sweeteners like stevia. Now they are very similar in effect and used as artificial sweeteners, only they're extracted and are found naturally in nature instead of being synthetically made. Now, to the contrary of popular belief, many artificial sweeteners actually do contain calories. Some are zero in calories, but others are not. For example, aspartame actually contains the same amount of calories as sugar. However, aspartame is about 200 times sweeter than sugar, thus drastically reducing the amount needed to sweeten the food to the same extent, and by extension, reducing the amount of calories added to the food. Now, naturally, if a food provides calories, it's going to spike insulin to some extent. But the hypothetical problem here is that many people believe that artificial sweeteners raise insulin to a much greater extent than what would be expected from the calories that you will be consuming. Or that artificial sweeteners might actually raise insulin without providing any calories at all. Now, if you're wondering why this is important, well, insulin is the hormone responsible for transferring nutrients from the bloodstream into the tissues, most predominantly sugar. And in the tissues, sugar is then used as an energy source, or it might be converted into glycogen to be stored for later. Now, normally, insulin is secreted as a response to a rise in blood sugar in order to transfer that excess sugar from the bloodstream into the tissues and keep our blood sugar levels stable. But if insulin were to be secreted in significant amounts without the sugar spike to actually back it up, it could lead to serious problems. First of all, sugar could drop below normal levels, which would mean hypoglycemia, which in turn would cause many side effects like drowsiness, tiredness, and in serious cases, even coma or death. Also, because of the additional transfer of sugar into the tissues, your body will have an excess amount of sugar to use. That sugar could be synthesized into glycogen to store for later, but in all likelihood, it would probably be used as an energy source. And what would the body do with that extra burst of energy if it didn't have any use for it at that time? Well, if you know anything about the basics of weight management, you would know that it would use up that energy to synthesize fat tissue. Your body cannot just ignore that extra energy, it needs to use it for something. And that's not even mentioning that the hypoglycemia you would experience would probably lead you to overeat later on, which would in turn cause even greater weight gain. So in simple terms, it would be pretty bad. But is this actually the case? Well, to figure that out, let's look at the research. The first and most important findings that we're going to look at are systematic reviews since they are the highest or second highest in the hierarchy of evidence, depending on what source you look at. This pretty much means that they have an extremely high scientific value. And we have two systematic reviews to look at in this video. The first one reviewed 36 trials with a total of 472 participants, in which trials they tested the acute effects of artificial sweeteners when compared to either water or sugary beverages, either by themselves in a vacuum, coupled with other foods, or as a preload to a meal later. Now, the primary goal for this study was to examine glucose levels. However, insulin and other factors were also examined. And this study found no significant effects on insulin levels in neither the uncoupled, coupled, or delayed coupled studies with the participants that consumed artificial sweeteners. In short, this systematic review found that there were no acute insulin responses to artificial sweeteners. The second systematic review is very similar to the first one in that it examines the acute effects of artificial sweeteners on glucose and insulin responses. This review examined 26 studies with 452 participants when it came to glucose response, 
and 394 participants when it came to insulin response. Though do keep in mind that many of these participants were likely overlapping. And like the first review, this one found no significant responses of either glucose or insulin on either the standalone comparisons or the comparisons coupled with a delayed meal or glucose tolerance test. So far, artificial sweeteners don't seem to have any impact at all on insulin levels. But even if we take it one step further and look at the primary studies, again, there seems to be little to no effect of artificial sweeteners when it comes to insulin levels. From the six to seven primary studies that I've examined that were published in the last 10 years, only one showed any significant effect of artificial sweeteners when it comes to insulin levels. And even that effect was only when coupled with a glucose tolerance test, at which a beforehand consumption of sucralose did increase the level of insulin that was secreted after the glucose tolerance test. But again, this was only one study in many. And if we take into account that two systematic reviews found literally no effect from artificial sweeteners on insulin secretion, yeah, it seems pretty unlikely. Now, one could make the argument that this only applies to the short term and that we need much more data to test whether or not artificial sweeteners could impact insulin levels in the long term. And while that's technically true, I personally find no reason to believe that a long-term consumption of artificial sweeteners would somehow impact the acute insulin response, since there's practically zero evidence for that in the short term. Now, I'm not saying that artificial sweeteners over the long term won't have any impact on insulin secretion. I'm just not convinced that that impact would be an acute insulin response. Now, whether or not they impair insulin secretion in the long term, slowly, that's another subject and it needs to be studied more. So if there's very little research to point out that artificial sweeteners actually cause an insulin spike, where did this idea come from? Well, there is something called the cephalic phase of insulin secretion. The cephalic phase is the phenomenon that many animals, including humans, secrete insulin as a response to sensory food cues before the nutrients from food are even absorbed. And these food cues include smell, sight, and of course, taste. In simple terms, if your brain thinks that a food is going to contain sugar, it starts to secrete insulin even before the sugar has a chance to be absorbed. The evidence seems to suggest that even though the cephalic phase probably exists in humans, it ultimately doesn't make any difference in the bottom line. So although cool in theory, ultimately it's really not a big factor. And I would also like to point out that many people make the hypothesis that consumption of artificial sweeteners may impact our gut microbiome and through that could have an impact to how our body responds and secretes insulin. This is a huge topic, it deserves a video of its own, so we're gonna leave it for another time. But even if this is the case, this is still more of a long-term effect. When it comes to artificial sweeteners acutely causing an insulin spike, and causing problems to your diet that way, we can be pretty confident that this is not the case. So I'd like to pose to you guys a question. Would you choose to use artificial sweeteners over sugar and why? Please let me know down in the comments. As for me, in my personal and professional opinion, I would and do recommend most people prefer artificial sweeteners over sugar if they have to choose one of the two. Of course, ideally, you would be consuming the entirety of your simple sugars in your diet from foods like fruits, vegetables, and maybe honey. But this is the real world, and many people like a splash of Splenda in their coffee or a Diet Coke with their meal. So yes, if you're going to choose something, I would recommend you choose sugar substitutes. It's a simple choice of choosing a substance that could potentially, over the long term, have some negative effects, even though the research is not conclusive, over a compound that has been linked with various diseases time and time and time again. Obviously, there's still a lot of research to be done for the long-term effects of artificial sweeteners, so take this advice with a grain of salt. And that was the video. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, please drop a like, maybe a comment, perhaps even subscribe for more videos like this. And I'll see you in the next one.